Hey everyone, welcome to the channel and back to another Dinkum video. In today's video, I'm going to show you six secrets you may have missed or may not know about in Dinkum. If you do end up enjoying the video and would like to see more Dinkum content, be sure to dink the like and subscribe buttons. We are currently on our way to 5,000 subscribers when this is being made and it all helps me out a ton and I really appreciate it. The first secret I'm going to show you is using the guitar item, which can be used in a few different ways. Keep in mind, you will have to find the guitar in the deep mines if you haven't already. Now, as you grow your farm and collection of animals, they can get pretty time consuming to take care of. If you go into your animals tab, you will notice each animal needs to be sheltered, fed, and pet daily. As you could imagine, the larger your animal farm gets, the more time you're going to have to spend petting each individual animal. Once you have found the guitar, you can walk over to all of your farm animals and strum a few times for them, which will give you the same star animation as when you pet them individually. When I go back into my animals tab, you can see that they now all have that box checked off. Something else you may have noticed when I strum the guitar is that the animals will actually follow the sound which is a huge help if you ever want to move them for any reason or if they happen to get out and you want to get them back in their pen. This is much easier than having to hit the whistle emote over and over again. The second secret I have for you is how to get Jimmy the secret sketchy vendor to visit your island. He will show up via boat and is easily spotted on the map as a question mark out in the water. To get Jimmy to spawn, you first have to unlock the deed to the bank on your island and you have to have at least 1 million dink in your bank account. He also only visits on days where it's raining. Once you get out to Jimmy's boat, you can head inside and he sells a few pretty cool items. The catch is he only accepts permit points in exchange. So you can see he has some gold paint, which you already saw on my helicopter, a gold kangaroo statue, a red glider, and a pocket watch that actually can manipulate time in the game, but it costs 20,000 permit points. Jimmy will also buy items from you, but only in bulk in chunks of 50 or more, but he will buy them at a premium price. For example, I checked to see how much he would buy these mushroom lamps for, and it was a little over 360,000 dink, which was about 120,000 more than John would have given me. For the third secret, and this may be one of the most useful tips I have found, I'm not sure if this was intended to be this way, but if you've ever passed out in game, you may have noticed you lose a ton of money, but I have found a fix for that by keeping your money in an inventory slot. You will see that in my money slot at the top of my inventory, I started with 372,000 dink, and after I woke up the next day from passing out, I had less than 300,000, losing about 74,000 dink just for passing out. Just to show you one more time exactly how this works, I put all of my dink in my pockets, one stack of almost 300,000, and the other stack had just a little over 11.5 million, leaving the money slot in my inventory completely empty at zero. Once I let the croc kill me, it still pushes me to the next day and my tools still lose health, but I didn't lose a single dink in the process. I find this super helpful for something like going down into the deep mines as it can get pretty tough down there. Now the next secret I have for you is that sometimes when it is storming, lightning will actually connect with the ground and when it does, it spawns a big egg called a thunder egg. Now these you have to carry over your head so you can't store them in your pockets, but you are able to throw them on the back of your motorcycle or a helicopter if you do have those, and you can transport them back to town. You can still use the teleporters if you'd like to fast travel back as well. When you get the egg back to town, you will take it to John's shop and weigh it on his scale and he will give you an offer based on how much it weighs. For this particular egg, John offered me 76,000, which is a pretty decent amount considering you just find these randomly. If the egg is not very heavy and not worth too much, you can always take it outside and break it open to find four opals inside. Now I do have all of the commerce licenses, which gives me an overall sales boost of 15%, so my opals sell for 19,500 dink a piece, which comes out to just 2,000 more dink than selling the egg 
so it ended up being worth it to break this one open. Though I have seen offers of over 80,000, which is way better than four opals will get you. For the fifth secret, there is yet another secret hunting gear vendor that wanders around your island named Ted Selly. Like Jimmy, there are a few requirements to having Ted Selly spawn on your island. You will need to have a hunting license of at least level two, and he only appears after 12 p.m. on Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays. I've seen that the chances of him spawning on your island are about 20%, but if you're struggling to find him and you end up near him, he will whistle to get your attention, so keep your ears open for that. He also carries around a torch at night, so he's pretty easy to spot in the evening. As I mentioned before, he is a hunting vendor, so he can craft you items for hunting that you're not able to craft yourself, like a battle shovel, a bow, arrows, and burly boxes for crocs, bush devils, and sharks, which basically just lure those animals to that position. Also, like Jimmy, Ted Selly will buy any items you've gotten from hunting wild animals for a premium price of 50% more. The sixth secret is kind of a three in one. It is acquiring the plant, fish, and bug books. You'll start with the plant book and you'll get it from Rain once you have two or more hearts with her and she'll give it to you as a gift. If you put the plant book in your tool belt and click on different crops, it will show you if they're ready to be harvested. It will also tell you how many days until the crops will be ready to be harvested. It will also tell you how many days for a tree sapling to grow, bushes, and even fruit trees. You can see that the book is telling me all of my sugar is ready to be harvested, but if I head over to plant these wheat plants, it tells me right away that it's going to be ready to be harvested in eight days. Next up is the bug book. Now, I don't know about you, but some of the daily requests get a bit annoying when you're asked to find that tiny stink bug that is hard to find wandering around. But what the bug book does is it places a label over the bug that not only tells you what the bug is, but how much it is worth when selling it. Now I walked pretty far away just to show you the distance that the bug book lets you see bugs from. It kind of feels like cheating, but it makes the daily bug requests really quick and easy. You can even see in a more bug populated area, the labels are really clear and it shows the bugs all over the place, making the bug book such an underrated tool in my opinion. Switching to the fish book, you can see it does the exact same thing as the bug book does. It tells you which fish is in the water and exactly how much it is worth. Now I haven't done as much fishing as I have bug catching, so more of the fish show as question marks, which also really comes in handy because then you know you need to catch that fish and donate it to the museum. You do unlock access to both the bug and fish books by donating at least 20 of each to Theodore at the museum and then you'll be able to purchase them there. All right, that is going to do it for the six secrets you might have missed in Dinkum. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to dink the like and subscribe buttons. Leave a comment down below. Let me know a secret of your own or comment an emoji to help me push this out. Thank you so much for chilling, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace!